on that and you might need a brick uh, or a book or something to support you but no props are really necessary for this class. So just to explain a little bit about what this is all about, I'm a shiatsu practitioner as well as a yoga teacher and shiatsu works on the same principles as acupuncture. So we work with the meridian or energy body. And forget about detoxification as you know it, this is more about renewing the wood energy in the body. So we're gonna be working with balancing the wood energy, which is the energy or the element that rules spring. And during spring, most of us were in lockdown, so we weren't able to move in a way that we naturally would. So if you see all of the plants outside, they're springing and bursting forth. We're about to hit the solstice. It's summer already, what happened to spring? So we might be feeling a little bit stagnant or stuck or lethargic or just like, I can't be bothered. So if any of that resonates with you, then this is the workshop for you. We're going to be working with releasing that stagnation from the body by stretching the liver and the gallbladder meridians. These are the meridians or organs in the body that are ruled by the wood energy. And we're going to just be stretching the body in general to create space. So if five element theory or Chinese medicine or energy work is a bit out there for you, don't let it contract you. It doesn't matter. You're still gonna get the benefits of the stretch. So let's start off by standing on our mats, feet hip distance apart. Look down at your toes and just spread them out. Make some space between your toes and let yourself settle. So as I said, this is all about creating space. We don't want to be rigid. Think about the flexibility of plants. Let yourself close the eyes and just take a moment to breathe and relax in your mountain pose. But maybe we can think more of this as a tree pose for today. So rooting the soles of your feet into the ground. Maybe you could visualize roots actually spurting from the soles of your feet into the earth beneath you, even if you're 10 stories high in an apartment block. Can you just imagine going deep down into the earth, maybe even into the core if your imagination takes you that far? And then allowing yourself to take some deep breaths as the shoulders relax, the collarbones float out, hands are heavy. If you can, breathing in through the nose, otherwise through the mouth. And just noticing how the body feels this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whenever you're doing this practice. Do you feel stuck? Do you feel stagnant? Do you feel stiff? and then opening the eyes. Letting go of those thoughts. We're going to find the gallbladder and liver meridian using a do-in technique. So this is a Japanese tapping technique. So take your fingertips up to the corner of the, the outside corner of the eyebrow. So this is our first gallbladder point. It's a great point for clearing the mind. So I'll come closer so that you can see exactly where it is. So right to the tip of your eyebrow, there's a little bit of an indent there that you can press into and you should feel perhaps a bit of pressure or perhaps it feels a little bit tender. So just using your fingertips to gently press into that point helps to clear and calm the mind. And then tapping using light taps like raindrops around the top of the ear. So this is where the gallbladder meridian runs. The gallbladder supports the liver, both in terms of Western science and in terms of five element theory. So when the gallbladder or the wood energy is out of balance, there can be headaches, especially one-sided headaches. So think about hangovers. That is a liver imbalance, according to Chinese medicine, according to most of us in the West also. And you tend to get headaches on the side of the head. So just lightly tapping the sides of the head and then take your fingertips down towards the neck. So right underneath the base of the occiput, that's the base of the skull, and down the sides of the neck, either side of where the spine is. You can maybe go a little bit harder. Again, the neck is somewhere that we quite often feel is quite sore and stuck when the wood energy is out of balance. 
And then maybe turning your hands into fists and pummeling the top of the shoulders. And then coming down the sides of the body. So this is where the gallbladder meridian continues. Be careful of the breasts if they're tender. Come down the sides of the waist. You can go a bit more vigorously here. Down to the sides of the hips. This is where we always have a lot of tension. The TFL. Down the IT band. That band of fascia that runs down the sides. The outsides of the legs. And then down the outside of your calves. And then come to the big toe, tap along the metatarsal, so the bone that detaches the big toe, and then along the inside of your legs. So come into this kind of froggy position, right to the inside of the thigh. Give it a good old whack, it might be tender, the liver meridian often is. And then coming up to the belly, give your liver a bit of love. So the liver is, I'm not mirroring you, so. For you, it looks like this. It's on the right side of your belly. It's a huge organ. You could just give the whole belly a bit of a rub. The liver has more than 500 metabolic tasks. So it's literally the laboratory of the body. It does so much, it is so big, it weighs around the same as the brain. And we tend to ignore it. We don't even know really where it is most of the time. Let's do that tapping again, just brushing off your belly. So come back to the gallbladder meridian, to the outer edges of your eyebrows. So this is just lighting up the meridian so that you can learn a bit about its pathway. And then tapping down the back of the neck. Again, this is a great technique if you have any pain or stagnation that's caused by a wood imbalance. So again, that's migraines, headaches, rising tension, that yang energy that lifts up into the head, so anger, rage, those are emotional qualities of an imbalance of the wood. And then come down the sides of the body. So if you suffer from things like PMT or the emotional stuff that goes with PMT, that can be um, an imbalance of the liver which rules the blood in Chinese medicine. We're going down the outside edge of both legs and then up the big toe and then a little bit of a pummel through the inside of the legs. So this is where the liver meridian runs. The gallbladder's to the outside, the liver's to the inside, yin and yang. And then give your belly a rub, give your liver some love. Okay, and then give it a bit of a shake out. So it's all about creating space so that we have flexibility of movement. Again, think of plants and how they move. If your feet are hip distance apart, take them a little bit wider apart. And again, spread your toes out so that you've got a good rooting foundation through the feet. And then we'll do our liver twist. So we did this in a workshop recently, but this is such a great twist for detoxification. It helps to invigorate the flow of blood and chi in the body. So you just have really loose arms. You can take this as deep as you like. Go easy if you've got any uh, issues with the shoulders, like your shoulders easily disjoint. You don't want to pull them out of their sockets, but it's pretty unlikely unless you have very loose shoulder joints. Make sure that you're breathing an obvious point, but we do sometimes hold the breath when we're concentrating. The breath creates space in the body. It creates vitality, so every time you breathe in, that oxygenation of every single red blood cell in the body gives you the vitality in order to be alive. So breathe deep, stay alive. Keep the eyes open. So this is important in this particular twist. The liver energy ends in the eyes and the wood element rules the eyes. So an example of a wood imbalance is jaundice. So that is a condition of the liver. So remember the wood element rules the liver and the gallbladder organs. So when you have jaundice, your eyes go very yellow. When you have alcoholism, your eyes tend to get very bloodshot and red. Again, a clear sign of an imbalance in the liver. So you want that bright vitality in the eyes by supporting your liver health. 
So keep the eyes bright, keep them open, looking behind you. Check in with if one side feels easier than the other. Can you turn one way more than the other? Again, that's a bit of a sign of a gallbladder imbalance, a one-sided condition. So see if you can balance it out using this twist and breathe. This is such a good thing to do first thing in the morning. Next time you're making a coffee, make it decaf if you can. I'm trying to stop coffee. I didn't have a coffee before I did this, especially for detoxification. It's so hard. So next time you're making it, whatever you make first thing in the morning, you can do this liver twist while you wait for the kettle to boil. Okay, and then slowly coming out of it, so the liver energy doesn't like to be jerked, it doesn't like sudden stops, it likes to flow smoothly. So smooth transition back to stillness. And then just allow yourself to close the eyes, unless you feel dizzy, in which case keep them open and just let yourself settle. Noticing how the body feels. Maybe you've created a bit more space, hopefully some space in the joints. The wood energy rules the tendons, so we want them to be strong and flexible. Let's work on a little bit of a flow now. So come to the front of your mat. Take your feet hip distance apart. Again, spread your toes out. We're making space in every single joint in the body. Extend your arms up to the sky, and then just keep the top of your head lifting up so you're not looking up. Feel that length through the spine. And then keeping your arms up high, just see if you can allow yourself to root a bit deeper into the earth. So again, if you're a visual person, shut the eyes and see if you can imagine roots spurting down towards the ground. Feeling really solid here. From the stability you get through rooting your feet down, you can allow your body to grow tall. So it's that dual mo movement of down and up. Think about trees and their roots that grow all the way down, as deep as their branches grow tall. Take hold of one of your branches, your right arm, take it by the wrist and extend it up towards the sky. And then drop over to the side, stretching through the side of the body. Make sure that you're breathing as you stretch through the side and press down through both of your feet. So you again want to feel that solidity through the lower half of the body so that you can stretch and grow tall. Remember that gallbladder meridian runs all the way down the side of the body. Come over to the other side. So release, then take hold of the left wrist and then stretch over. Pressing down through both feet. If you've gone so far that you can't breathe, then don't go so far. Keep this easy, keep it loose. Roll into the shoulders a little bit. Make space along the sides of the body. Remember that gallbladder meridian. Breathe all the way down through the length of it. And release. Come back to centre at the front of your mat. Again, your feet hip distance apart, rooting into the earth. Take a big breath in and take the hands up to the sky. Relax the shoulders down. As you exhale, come into a forward fold, and again, let it be really easy. So you can bend the knees as much as you like, make space around the knee joints. The head is heavy, so give it a shake. And then just experience the force of gravity drawing your spine towards the ground. So all you're doing here is breathing and releasing into your forward fold, Uttanasana. Last breath. As you inhale, rise halfway, press your feet into the ground to do this, and as you exhale, plant the hands, step your feet back into a downward facing dog, so this upside down V shape. Your heels are rooting towards the earth, your shoulders are away from the ears. Move around, so be flexible again, finding space in the joints, finding space between the muscles and the bones. And then drop down onto your knees. Untuck your toes. And then we're going to move in a cat cow that is completely free. So I invite you to close your eyes so that you can just let go of what I'm doing. And move in a way that feels good for your body. 
So remembering that the joints are particularly relevant to this session, to the wood element. So make space along the joints of the spine. Can you imagine how many joints there are along the length of your spine between each of the vertebrae? Can you make space in the shoulders, the length of the neck? Can you wriggle your tail from side to side? Remember the sides of the body are particularly relevant here where the gallbladder meridian runs. So the gallbladder is the yang partner of this energetic pair. The liver is the yin. Make sure that your breathing is removed in the freedom of your kind of cat cow, although maybe it doesn't look much like a cow, maybe a bit more like a cat. Think how freely cats move and stretch and ease out stagnation from the body. We've almost had an extended winter slumber with this lockdown, so we might need a bit more invigoration for this spring period, which is now very much summer. Okay, so coming back to centre, coming back to stillness, tuck the toes, lift your knees, take the hips up to the sky, downward facing dog, and then looking up towards the hands, step your hands just behind the wrists, and then take your palms underneath the soles of your feet, so your toes are touching your wrists, and your fingertips are pointing towards your heels. Again, bend the knees if you like, otherwise just dropping down into a comfortable forward fold. Make it comfortable by bending the knees if your back is sore. Take a breath, stretch out the wrists, rock ever so slightly back and forth. Don't come into a forward roll, this isn't purpose. And then release. Press into the feet, rise all the way up, take the hands up to the sky. And then exhale the hands all the way back up. Press into your feet. Take the hands back up once again. Take hold of the left wrist and stretch it tall. As you exhale, come over to the right side, stretching all the way through the left side of this gallbladder meridian. Take another breath. Press into your left foot to find stability. Wave yourself back to centre. Take hold of the right wrist. Lift it tall, stretch through the right side of the body, and then come over to the left, stretching through the right side of your gallbladder meridian. Again, pressing through your right foot to give you stability. Wave yourself back tall, take the hands to the sky, and then cross your right foot over your left. We're going to drop down back into our forward fold with the feet crossed. It may be that you don't come as deep, it may be that you come a little bit higher. You can use the support of your legs if you need. You should feel a nice deep stretch in the side of your hip. This is great for runners. Take another breath, ease the head down towards the earth. And then inhale, lift halfway. As you exhale, release that right foot, step it all the way back into a runner's lunge. So drop the back knee down, untuck the back toes. Press into your right hand, lift your left hand up to the sky. Come into this twist. See if you can twist from the navel, so almost like your belly button wanted to reach up and look above your left thigh. You can open the chest a little bit more, stretching that left palm all the way back, opening yourself up to the sunshine and breathe. One more big breath. As you exhale, wave that left hand down to the ground. As you inhale, we're going to step through a flow, but you don't have to do this. You can come straight to a down dog if you're tired. The flow is a plank coming down through knees, chest, chin. The elbows come back. Untuck the toes. Lift up to cobra as you take a big breath in, arching through the back, and then exhale, downward facing dog. Coming over to the other side, so look between your hands, squeeze your right thigh into your belly, and then step it up between the hands. Drop the back knee down, untuck the back toes, press into your left hand, reach your right hand up to the sky. Lift it right up, so open your chest, open your heart. 
Press that right hand all the way back so that you're really feeling that twist in the middle of your belly, around where the liver is. Remember that giant organ. So supposedly, if they uh, do surgical procedures on the liver and have to cut a lot out, it grows back. The liver has this incredible quality where it can grow back. The liver is magic. Give it some love. And then exhale to take your right hand down. We're going to tap the toes of the left foot and step forward, crossing the left foot over the right. Breathe in, rise halfway. And as you exhale, come into your forward fold. This time you should be feeling quite a deep stretch in the right side of the hip. You may be feeling it in other places. Wriggle yourself into it if it feels good. Remember, we don't have to be static in this practice. Last breath. Press into your feet, rise all the way up, hands high, uncross the feet, and then exhale, take the hands all the way back down. Just settle yourself once again, press your feet into the mat, root yourself down so that you can grow tall, hands high. Grab hold of your left wrist, lift it up a little bit higher, easing through the shoulders, stretch over to the right side. Press through your left foot, inhale, extend yourself over. As you exhale, wave back to centre. As you inhale, lift the right wrist high, come over to the left. Inhale, extend yourself deeper. Exhale, back to centre. As you inhale, step your right foot over your left. As you exhale, come into a forward fold. Head is heavy. Inhale, rise halfway. Exhale, plant the hands, step the right foot all the way back. This time you might want to keep the back knee off the mat. Ease yourself into a stretch through those right hip flexors. And then just see if you can, rather than look right down, so that there's this kind of crease in the neck, your neck is in line with the rest of the spine, so that you can feel some good length through your spine. And you're stretching all the way through the front fascial plane. So pressing the heel back, bouncing yourself back and forth, finding some flexibility in the tendons around the hip, in that hip joint. And then if you wish, you could drop the knee back down. If you want, you can keep it high, up to how strong you want your practice to be. Lift the left hand high. We're coming into an archer's lunge. So from here, lift the right hand off the ground. Twist your navel to look over towards the left side. So you're coming into a twist. So again, if you want a bit of a stronger practice, lift that back knee off the floor. Keep rotating from your waist. So your navel's looking over your top left thigh. Keep pressing down through your right heel so that you can feel stability and strength in the lower part of the body and a bit of ease and movement in the upper part of the body. Take another breath. And then inhale, take the hands high. Lift the right knee off the ground if it's not there already. Exhale to a warrior two. From here, coming into Pasva Konasana. So either bending the left elbow, dropping it down on that left knee, and extending the right hand all the way towards the front of the room. Or if you want to come deeper, take the left hand down to the ground, to the outside or the inside of the left foot, and again, that right hand is stretching over towards the front. Press through the outer edge of your back foot so that you feel length all the way through that gallbladder meridian to the right side of the body. And breathe. Last breath to extend yourself deeper along the side body. Feel the liver meridian being activated. Remember that's to the inside of the thighs. Last breath. Press deeply into your feet. Find strength and power through the feet. Lift yourself into warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. There's a 90 degree angle in your front knee. The back leg is straight. Relax your shoulders. Take a breath. From here, drop your right hand down. Turn your left palm up. Take a big breath in and reverse your warrior. Don't put pressure down onto your back knee. 
Find strength through pressing your feet into the ground so that you can lift yourself up and over. Deep breath here. As you exhale, come back into your past Vakonasana, but with the elbow on that left knee. So again, into your side stretch, right fingertips forwards. As you inhale, you're going to wave yourself back to your reverse warrior. As you exhale, you're coming forwards. Movement with the breath. Deep breaths in, lifting back. Deep breaths out, lifting forwards. See if you can find lightness and ease through the upper body. So like your arms were just branches of a tree waving in a wind. Your feet are rooted and grounded like the trunks and the roots of a tree. Your arms and body are like the branches. Last few breaths. I know it's strong. We're creating strength at the same time as space. Last inhalation to wave you back. And as you exhale, take the hands all the way down to the ground. Turn onto the right toes. Step back through your flow or straight to down dog. If you're flowing, come down to your knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha, Cobra. Exhale, Adho Mukha, downward facing dog. Coming over to the other side. So step your right foot up between your hands. Your choice, either drop the back knee or keep it lifted. Ease into that left hip for a moment. So just kind of wriggling yourself into the left hip flexors. You could rock from side to side. You could bounce yourself back and forth, pressing the heel down towards the earth. Getting a nice bit of juicy flexibility into the hips. A lot of stagnation gets stuck in the hips. We need to have the hips open so that the chi can flow all the way through the body. So again, your choice, you could drop the knee down, press into the left hand, lift the right hand up to the sky. Keep opening up the chest. We're coming into our archer's lunge. So lift your left hand off the mat. You're twisting the navel to look over to the right side. If you want to challenge the balance, the strength of the legs, keep the back knee lifted and press the back heel towards the ground. Keep rotating your torso to look over to the right. Make sure that you're breathing. Lightness and ease in the shoulders. Last breath. As you inhale, take the hands up to the sky. As you exhale, come into your warrior two. Hips are open to the left side of the mat. 90 degree angle in the right knee. Your shoulders are loose. Your head is tall. <sighs> Pass for Kanasana. That right elbow comes down onto the right knee. Or the palm comes down to the ground. Or a, or a prop if you have one handy. Extend your left fingertips forwards. Make sure that your shoulder isn't scrunching up to the ear. It just creates compression and we're trying to create space. You can look towards your little finger or you can just look to the side. Keep pressing that back heel into the ground so that you can feel the stretch all the way along the gallbladder meridian through the side of the body. Press firmly into the feet for your last breath. Inhale to warrior two once again. Drop your back hand down, your right palm turns up. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Open your chest towards the sky, relax the shoulders. Keep firmly pressing through the feet. That will give you the integrity for the pose. Last breath. Remember, we're moving with the breath as we wave our branches through the wind. So exhale, drop your right elbow onto your knee, extend your left fingertips forwards. Inhale to come back, reverse warrior. Exhale forward. Inhale back. Feel the power in your legs keeping you in this stance, in this shape as you move and breathe. Remember, we won't be here forever, so if you're feeling the burn in your legs, that's okay. It's creating strength, which is what we need to move forwards. 
Last round. Last inhale back. As you exhale, cartwheel the hands either side of that front foot. Turn onto the toes of the back foot. We're inhaling to step the left foot forward, cross it over the right. Inhale once more to lift halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Feel that juicy stretch in the hips. Let yourself release a little bit deeper here. For me, this feels much tighter. Notice if one side feels tighter than the other. Again, that one side is conditioned. Take another big breath. Press through the feet. Rise all the way up. Hands high. Uncross the legs. Big breath in to lift the chest. And then exhale. Take the hands down. Step back with either foot. It doesn't matter which. Just make sure that you can see or hear. We're coming into a wide leg stance. You can have the legs as wide as you like. Just make sure that you feel rooted. So pressing the feet into the ground. Slightly tuck your tailbone in. So imagine you have a tail and you're tucking it between the legs. You should then feel some more lift in your spine. Take your hands onto your hips for a moment. Take a big breath in. As you exhale, drop all the way down into a forward fold. Release the hands to the ground. If you can't touch the ground with your hands, take some grips, take wider legs, or bend your knees. That's an easy cheat. Take a breath in, lift halfway. Exhale into your forward fold. Head is heavy, so give it a shake. Yes, no, make sure that the neck is long. From here, walking your hands over to your right foot, take hold of your foot or your shin, and then inhale, lift your left hand up to the sky, coming into a twist. Keep rotating from the torso, so lifting your heart up towards the sky. Keep breathing here, keep pressing into both of your feet so that you've got the solidity of the stance through your feet and you can open up freely towards the sky. One more breath. Exhale, come down. Come over to the other side, grabbing the wrist, the the shin or the ankle, not the wrist, and then extending the right hand up to the sky. Look up, look up not just with your eyes, but with your belly. And breathe. Great. Exhale, come all the way down. Take your hands onto your hips, press into the feet. Inhale to come all the way up. We're going to find our first point on the liver channel. So I'll just come a bit closer so you can see. You can stay in your wide stance if you like, or you can just come up to look at your foot, practice your balance by standing on one foot. So this is liver three. You can find it by taking your index finger in between your thumb, your big toe, <laughs> your big toe and your second toe. So this squidgy bit in between the bones. And if you run your finger up the bone of the big toe, you might find a little subtle joint. It's quite subtle, sometimes it's quite hard to feel. There's a vein in the way also. But basically it's a point that's in between the big toe and the second toe that feels tender. And I've never worked on a client where this does not feel tender. So just find a place that feels a bit sore. So on me, it's about here. It's on both sides, all the points of the meridians, of the organ meridians are on both sides of the body. So you can find it on both sides of the feet. And then press into both sides of the toes. So liver three on both sides. If you can't find the point, don't worry about it. Just find around the squidgy bit between the big toe and the second, and then press into it. Come back into your wide leg forward fold. The head again is heavy. So we're pressing into this point because it, in, it, increases, it increases flexibility. It increases the openness of the hips. It helps to draw the yang energy down. So yang energy is what happens when the liver is feeling very um, 
overwhelmed or out of balance, and so it sends the yang up. Again, we get headaches or migraines or anger or tension. So this is a great point for taking that liver yang energy down through the feet. So keep pressing into this point in your wide leg forward fold, and that just gives the yoga stretch a little bit more of an energetic quality. Shoulders are relaxed. Make sure that you're breathing. You could direct the flow of your breath into the point that you're pressing. Last breath. As you press, you might start to feel a bit of tingling sensation underneath your thumbs. And then release. Take the hands down to the ground. Walk your feet in just to the outside of your hands. We're coming down to a yogi squat. If your heels are off the ground, it makes it more challenging for sure. We won't stay here for too long. Take your hands into prayer in front of the heart. Roll the shoulders back. And then press your elbows into your inner thighs. Remember that liver meridian. And see if you can press the knees away so you've got a bit more of a wide stance going on here. Last breath. Lift your spine a bit taller, crown of the head lifts, lovely. And then release, take your hands down, sit on your bum and extend your legs out wide. So same stance as we did before, but now we're sitting down, so perhaps a little bit less challenging. Take your hands either side of your right leg and turn your navel to look over towards your right knee. You want to have both of your feet flexed so that you've again got the integrity of the pose through your base. And then drop your left elbow onto your left thigh, lift your right hand up to the sky, and stretch yourself over towards that left foot. So you're opening up through <clears throat> the right side of the body. So if you stop being able to breathe, you've gone too far. See if you can just release from it a little bit. Find a bit more freedom of movement. These side stretches tend to be quite challenging for many of us. So just take it easy. The most important thing is that we're creating length all the way down through the side of the body and at the same time creating length through the midline of the body along this liver meridian. This is the Makaho stretch for liver and gallbladder. So it's what shiatsu practitioners will recommend to their clients who have a liver or gallbladder or wood element imbalance and breathe. Last breath. Wave yourself back to centre, just allow the spine to reconfigure and then come over to the other side. So hands either side of the left leg, turn your navel to look over towards the left and then stretch over, opening up the left side of the body. So your right elbow drops down onto your thigh, your left fingertips stretch over to the side, opening up the heart space, maybe a gentle sensation of twisting. So every time we twist the body, we're increasing the natural detoxification process of the internal organs, which are detoxifying themselves all the time. So when we're breathing in, the diaphragm pushes down and we squeeze the organs, again, increasing that, that, that movement of detoxification. When we're twisting, again, we're helping with the squeeze. So keep rotating your chest for this last breath. And then release. Take hold of the underside of your knees, lift them up, and then bring the soles of your feet together. Drop your knees out to wherever they come. Let's see if we can find those liver points as we're sitting down. It may be a little bit easier to find them now. So again, you just squish around between the big toe and the second toe until you find the joints, the first joint of the big toe. Again, I'll come and show you so that you can see where it is on my beautiful foot here. There is also a wonderful point on the other side of the foot called kidney one. Again, this is great for releasing tension in the hips where we store a lot of our emotional and physical tension. So you could take your thumbs to kidney one. So that it's a point that you probably would have squished on your sole of your foot before. And you can take your second fingers to the liver point, liver three, if you want to look it up after the class. 
You could then drop into a forward fold if that feels good. You'll feel a real good stretch to the inside of the thighs, to the outside of the hips. Again, this is all great for gallbladder and liver, great for releasing tension in the hips. Your shoulders are relaxed. It's not about forcing yourself into the biggest stretch possible. It's all about creating space. So just taking a few silent breaths here. Stay focused on the points that you're pressing into, where the mind goes, the chi follows. These points are wonderful for sending yin energy up and yang energy down. So it's rebalancing the whole of the body. We tend to have this stuck, stagnant feeling when we're not moving enough. That can result in not knowing which way to turn, which direction to take our lives. Indecision is a really good indication that the liver is out of balance. Last few breaths here, so focusing on the place that you're feeling the pressure. And then release. So you might have felt a little bit more pressure, a tingling or a warmth in the place that you're pressing. Don't worry if you didn't, but as you hold the points for longer, you can start to feel this kind of building of chi of energy into the, the point. Um, you can hold them for as long as you like. There's no problem with holding the pressure points. We tend to put needles in for about 20 minutes, but with shiatsu and acupressure, you can do it for as long as you can be bothered, which probably won't be 20 minutes. Okay, so bring the knees together. And let's come into our final stretch. This is going to be, um, very much to release the hips, it's a pigeon, so perhaps a, a pose of familiarity. We'll come into a downward facing dog to come into the stretch, and then take your right knee to your right wrist, slide your left leg all the way back, so that you're sinking down onto that right hip. Your hip may not come as low as this. If it doesn't, and you feel that you're a bit wonky, then take a cushion underneath your right hip, so you pad yourself up. I'll just change the screen so perhaps you can see that a bit more. Now if your hip was lifted, you would take a pillow so both hips are in line. And then we're going to come back to our gallbladder meridian around the sides of the head. So you can lie down. You can take the elbows to the ground if that's available to you. And then give yourself a massage. So round the sides of the ears. Remember that the gallbladder meridian started at the outer corner of the eyebrow where those little dips are. Just rubbing your fingers lightly from that space all the way down around the ear towards the base of the skull. Moving in that direction, that is the flow, the way the gallbladder energy moves in a downwards direction. The liver energy moves up. So again, this is a great thing to do if you've ever got a hangover, which of course you won't because you're super clean yogi type person who never drinks. Great for detoxification, supporting the function of the liver and gallbladder. And then going to come out of this pigeon in a moment, just releasing the hands down to the ground, taking your forehead to the earth, coming a little bit deeper into your pigeon, so a sleeping swan. So resting here, I know that it may be very intense for many of us, but just seeing if you can relax into your sleeping swan. If you have any knee pain, then come out of the pose. You can always practice a figure four. But if your knees are fine, staying here for a few more breaths. You can feel, remember we lit up the gallbladder meridian at the beginning of the class. You can feel the gallbladder meridian all the way along the outer edge of that right leg. This is also a really great stretch for a wonderful gallbladder point, gallbladder 30, that we have to use an acupuncture needle that's several inches long 
to access. So we don't need a needle, we can actually just use this yogi stretch to get into that space. So this point called bladder 30 is a great point for, again, bringing, drawing the yang energy down. It releases stagnation, it helps with the flow of blood and chi in the body. A lot of emotional stuff comes up for lots of students, lots of us in um, yin classes in particular when we're opening up the hips. Again, I believe this is to do with the stagnation of the hips and we're releasing it. So when we hold these poses for a little bit longer, we start to release some of the stuck energy and some of that stuck energy comes up, rises up as emotion. Last breath here. Okay, and then gently pad yourself back into your upright pigeon. Press your palms down to the ground. Tuck your left toes under, lift your back knee, and then release your right leg back. Come into a downward facing dog. Stretch out through the back of the legs, easing out the tension from your hips that may have built up. We'll come over to the other side whenever you're ready. So the left knee drops down to the back of the left wrist. You slide your right leg back. Again, use a pillow under that left hip if you feel that the hips are a bit out of line. And then again, dropping down onto your elbows and giving yourself a bit of a massage around that gallbladder meridian. So again, if you find this painful, come into figure four, sitting up, you're still stretching the exact same pathway, you're still stretching through the gallbladder meridian, but there's less pressure on the knee joint. So last few strokes around the gallbladder meridian on the side of the head. Great for releasing headaches. And then come down into your sleeping swan. So forehead connect with the ground and from there you just relax. So easier said than done, I realize if your hips are tight. But see if you can breathe yourself through into relaxation. So really focusing on the exhalation, allowing yourself to sink. The more we can relax, the more we open up space in the body so that there's a free flow of chi, there's a free flow of blood. The more space we create in the body, the more space we create in the mind. So just allowing yourself to be still and soft for the last few breaths of this shape. And I'll leave you in silence for a moment just to experience what happens when you hold a pose in stillness. Three more breaths. And then pad yourself back up. Remove whatever you might have underneath your left hip. Drop over onto the left side and slide your legs forward. We're going to come to lie down and find our last pressure point. So this is gallbladder 20. It's such a wonderful point randomly really good for Parkinson's. So if you know anyone with Parkinson's, it's great for the tremors and shakes. But it's also, again, brilliant for releasing tension in the head, great for headaches, migraines, PMT, anger, rage, hives, any kind of hot condition. So I'll show you at the back of my head. So the occiput, again, is a bony ridge at the base of the skull. If you take your thumbs to the outside of the erector spinae muscles, so these muscles that protect the spinal column, there's these kind of dips. If you press the thumbs up towards your skull, you can feel most likely some uh, tension, some pressure. Maybe it feels a little bit tender in that space. 
So just giving yourself a bit of a massage, you can just press into that space. If you can't find it, then just press the thumbs all the way along the ridge of the skull, pressing towards the skull. So the direction of the thumbs is towards the opposite eye. So you can kind of imagine maybe a light running from the tip of your thumb all the way through to the opposite eye. That's how we project the chi when we're doing shiatsu. So just holding in stillness if you found those points. See if you can relax your shoulders. And then release for a moment so that you can come to lie down. And again, find the points once again as you're lying. So a bit of a different quality as you release into a Shavasana. Finding those points once again. And just allowing the weight of your head to drop down into your thumbs. From here, you can gently draw the skull away from your shoulders. So just kind of lifting your head, using your thumbs, using your hands. Lift your head away, find length through your neck, and then drop the back of the head down to the ground and release your arms by the side. Extend your right arm away from you, and then your left, and then relax. Extend your right heel as far away from your hips as you can, and then your left, and then relax. Make sure that you feel balanced on both sides of the body. So remember, when the wood element is out of balance, there tends to be a bit of a one-sided condition going on. So that inability to make choices, for example, not knowing which way to turn, not knowing which path to go down. There can be pain or difficulty on one side of the body, although, of course, this can be lots of different things, not just a wood imbalance. There can be rising yang tension in the upper body. Hopefully, we've shaken most of that out now. So just, again, making sure you feel balanced on both sides of the body so that you can rest in your shavasana. And then taking your hands, one palm on top of the other, over the liver space. So the liver is more to the right side of the torso. So taking the hands just beneath the floating ribs on the right side of your belly. Connecting with that huge organ. So the reason why babies' bellies are so protruded is because the liver is so large. And particularly large in children compared to the other organs. <coughs> so sending a bit of love into your liver space. Sending some compassion into that area, into that organ, and feeling the warmth of your palms, connecting with the organ as you rest in stillness. You're bringing the mind back into your physical experience as it wanders elsewhere. Releasing your liver space. Bend your knees and draw them in towards your belly. Giving them a squeeze. 
rocking from side to side, last release of your hips. With the eyes closed, rolling over onto your left side before padding yourself up to a comfortable seat. Again, keeping the eyes closed or the gaze within just for the last moment of our practice together. The back of the hands can rest on the knees. Feel the grounding foundation through your hips as the lower part of the body sinks and roots into the support of the earth. The spine grows tall like the stem of a flower. The face is soft and beautiful. The shoulders relax. Taking a moment to experience the space within the body. Calm within the mind. And then taking your hands into prayer in front of the heart. Giving yourself some gratitude for taking time to support the detoxification of your body, support your liver health. And just look after yourself. Bowing the head, connecting the mind and the heart together. And then taking the hands down in thanks to the earth for supporting us in our practice. Namaste. So there's a lot going on there. There's a lot of Western science. There's a lot of Eastern tradition. It doesn't all have to make sense. Hopefully you can still feel the benefit of this physical practice that we've done together today. If you have any questions, then please just ask. You can drop me a message on Facebook or find me on Instagram at Holistically Becca. And I'll be very happy to talk about this subject, which I'm very passionate about. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I look forward to meeting some of you soon.